Hi, it's uh, Chris from Engaging Data, and we are back for another Engaging Data Bytes. And today we're talking all about data warehouse testing with our partners at Big Eval. Now, testing best practices is something everybody should be following. Um, everyone should be thinking about them, especially when it comes to building and working within a data warehouse. The reason for this session and what sparked the idea of doing this video was actually a conversation I had with one of our clients around some of the more common challenges in the data quality space. So we invited our partners at Big Eval back to talk us through one of their success stories with one of their long term partners, uh, customer clients, the Helsana Group, and how they helped them achieve their data goals quickly by delivering stable, trustworthy data. I've got Thomas with us today, who's going to talk us through this great case study and showcase with a short demo exactly how the Big Eval tool was able to help Helsana overcome these challenges. We will have time for Q&A at the end, so please stick any questions you get in the chat and we'll try and answer as many as we can as we go through. So, Thomas, let's get straight into this. Um, I want to start by talking about the insurance industry itself. We know it's highly regulated and therefore it's going to be facing some really complex data challenges where I imagine there's hefty penalties for non-compliance. And we know that just monitoring technical processes is no longer enough. You can't just add some data governance processes and expect it to be good enough. Data needs to be validated, right? And on a large scale and in many different ways to ensure that it's always correct. And we understand that that's where Hasana, who have been a long-term customer of yourself, solved this by introducing Big Eval's data validation solution. Okay, thank you, Chris, for having me today. Welcome, everybody. My name is Thomas Bolt. I'm from Big Eval. I'm the CTO and founder of the company. And uh, yeah, I'm the technical guy here at Biggie Well. So uh, that means uh, I can tell you a lot about how it technically works and how it can be used and so on in different usage scenarios. But uh, as Chris already said, today we like to focus on the insurance industry. We are talking about specific case of Helsana a little bit, but first let me start with uh, uh, giving you an introduction to the specific data uh, regulated uh, industry like the insurance industry faces. And if you're not from the insurance industry, it doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of things will be uh, familiar for you as well, I think. And if it solves something in this highly regulated insurance industry, it probably can solve your requirements or challenges too. So yeah, stay tuned and we will see how this helps Helsana and probably in your case. And yeah, from the agenda, I start with the challenges, showing you this, and then I go over to Helsana, showing you how they solved uh, the, the problems. And at the end, we will doing a short demo and Q&A, as Chris already said. So that's what we will do today. Okay, so let's start with the challenges. So I picked out a couple of challenges. I would say the main challenges they face. So yeah, the regulatory landscape is evolving. It changes quickly. That's a problem they have. So uh, usually uh, the insurance industry faces two different scenarios uh, with changing regulatory landscape. Either they need to be implemented very quickly. So yeah, this is uh, very dangerous to implement quick changes if high penalties are connected to, uh, to the result after development. And the other scenario is that you have a lot of time, but usually it's very complex to, to do or to implement these changes. So yeah. Deadlines could be short or either everything is very complex. The second thing is transparency. The regulated industry needs a lot of transparency. So audits may happen and there need, need to be a good documentation and also there need to be uh, audit trails. Audit trails doesn't only mean to show an auditor how something changed over time, maybe like uh, how did you change a test case, how did you change an entity or a, a design modeling of whatever. It's also about how your data evolved over time or how it changed to show the history of uh, entities. So usually the, the insurance industry has a uh, very complex uh, historization needs and audit needs, and these need to be implemented as well. And yeah, so the, the, the third thing I picked out is our data silos, which often lead to communication breakdowns. So we are talking usually about big companies with a lot of teams, huge teams with, with many people working in these teams, and they are often isolated. And this leads to 
to systems uh, that are isolated as well. Each department or business unit usually or often has their own uh, silos, their own systems uh, are often doing the same like another department or business unit is doing. And at the end, management needs needs a consolidated view of this. Yeah, this cries for workarounds and, and because data is often not directly matchable and uh, huge costs are connected with this as well. The other thing here is scalability and flexibility. To be competitive on the market, also in the insurance industry, where the market uh, evolves usually very quickly uh, with new products that need to be offered to, uh, to customers with own requirements on data modeling, on data reporting and analysis. And this all needs to be implemented very quickly. And if you have isolated, separated data silos and um, very large structures in your infrastructure, then yeah, this uh, is very complex to change. And yeah, workarounds are present and the outcome could be very costly uh, because uh, issues and errors cannot be tracked down and it's very complex to find a way to go through this uh, without any issues. So yeah, uh, scalability is very important here. Okay. and. We from Biggiewell implemented a, a concept, a strategy, how to help or support these scenarios. And I show you this picture here. It's a, a medieval fortress um, that is used to uh, protect a lot of things. Let's say you start with the king and queen, with people, and maybe resources that are, that are inside of this fortress. And Last but not least, the treasure of the of the king's or uh, queen's family, and yeah, even if the, in the medieval age they built up these um, uh, these solid structures, uh, this solid infrastructure to defend what is inside of the fortress, and so it's uh, first the design of this fortress that defends enemies. Uh, and uh, secondly, we have different methodologies how to defend against enemies. Uh, so maybe we have guards, we have uh, these watchtowers and many more things that need need to be present to offer a strong fortress to, to guard everything. Then, so if we adapt this to data strategies, uh, we have three different important pillars. Uh, first of all, we have the watchtowers of the fortress. In our terms, these are the data quality management actions we have. Uh, so the, the watchtowers are overseeing everything and are overseeing the, the infrastructure, are overseeing the data that is stored and can uh, trigger any defending actions. So we will look a little bit deeper later. Uh, the second pillar we have is data validation. Everything that goes in or out of the fortress need to be validated. The third thing are the maintenance workers. They take care of the fortress and ensure that everything works how it should. And this leads me to more details about these three pillars. So let's start again with the data quality management. And so yes, the, the watchtowers are for continuous monitoring the data infrastructure, the data landscape. You set quality benchmarks and uh, data quality management is responsible to check whether these quality benchmarks are met or not. They raise red flags if something doesn't work correctly. Uh, they check for integrity, consistency, maybe timeliness. There are uh, different dimensions in data quality management that need to be integrated and checked on a, on a regular basis to ensure that quality meets these criteria. Then I talked about triggering processes to fix issues. Uh, this is also important. If something, an, an issue gets detected, like watchman in the tower sees an enemy arising from the forest there, then uh, uh, he need to trigger any actions to defend these enemies. And the same is in data quality management. Maybe the data quality management system triggers a technical process, like let's say reloading a, a dimension of a data warehouse or the full data warehouse, whatever, uh, or probably triggering a business process. So a business process could be that the right people, the data stakeholders or data stewards get an information or get a task uh, to fix these data quality issues and yeah. One of these two different things is relevant and can be triggered from a good data quality solution.
Then proactive data validation. So the, the watchmen sitting there on, on the drawbridge, of, on the gates of the fortress, they check everything that goes inside or outside of the fortress. So that means uh, if we adapt this to uh, data quality scenarios or to our data landscape, this is where data pipelines are transporting data. This could be an internal pipeline like an ETL or ELT process, and or it could be a data import from a supplier or a data export, let's say to a, to a customer or something like this. And everything needs to be checked before it enters or leaves our data landscape. And uh, there are different quality so, uh, requ requirements, uh, standards that need to be met. And so some people are talking about data contracts in this uh, related to this data validation. And uh, yeah, there are technical validations that can be done. So whether data meets some technical requirements or uh, or checks against the business model, let's say, check whether a premium is aligned to the risk profile of a specific customer and so on. Okay, and last but not least, the data test automation. So the maintenance worker of our data landscape. So we are speaking about the release process or the development process of our system components. So maybe developing a data warehouse or changing or adding new features to a data warehouse as an example. And everything that gets built needs to be checked and tested. But you need to also do regression testing Regression testing is checking things that have been built in a previous sprint or in a previous release over and over again. So to uh, to avoid side effects and a good des test automation framework helps you in doing this automatically so that you don't have any manual efforts to do it. And that brings the most benefits. OK, so this is, uh, I think, basics about uh, challenges and how to overcome these in the, in a regulated industry with our concept. We have a webinar series uh, that goes much deeper into details. Uh, you can reach it here with this QR code. So I'm talking there a, a little bit more about the details of, of all these pillars if you are interested in this. Okay. Hi, Thomas. Uh, we actually got a couple of questions that might be more yes. relevant for you to go through now. We had a question around the fortresses. So if we've got a great developer team that have built such a fortress themselves. In your opinion, why should they be buying expensive software to do this now instead? Yeah, that's an important uh, and interesting question. It's I, I would say uh, if we look here back to the picture of these maintenance workers, you can uh, build your fortress by yourself. I would say this is the do it yourself approach. So you go to the uh, to uh, to uh, any uh, shop and buy materials and so on and build your own fortress. Uh, but you can go a standardized way if you want. Uh, a standardized way, that's, that's exactly what Helsana had as a requirement we are talking about later. And they want they had their do-it-yourself approach, but they switched over to a standardized way. And that, uh, that was a better approach for them because they had less efforts and so on. I will show you that later in the presentation. Who is Helsana? Helsana is a Swiss health insurance company. We have a lot of health, ins health insurance companies here in Switzerland, in this, even in this small country. But Helsana is, I would say, one of the biggest uh, health insurers here. Uh, so they have about uh, 2 million insured uh, uh, people, their customers, and 3,500 employees working with Helsana. Uh, they are customers since 2017, or well, customers since 2017. And yeah, they are doing great work there with, um, with the, the data infrastructure. So let me show you what requirements they had. So I talked about in, in answering the question before they had a do-it-yourself approach first. Uh, so they built their own framework a couple of years ago. They were quite happy with this, but over time it grew and it would uh, became even more complex and was difficult to maintain. So yeah, they had a high maintenance effort. It was not flexible, and there were dependencies, the dependencies to human resources. So there were just a couple of people that were able to maintain this system. So they strived to standardize this testing concept and they wanted to migrate all test cases uh, they had. These were a lot of test cases. They, they wanted to migrate 100% of, of these test cases to the new system. So they don't do a step back. They wanted to go forward with this. Then uh, all these test cases led to a high test coverage throughout the whole 
data landscape, uh, but uh, their goal was uh, to get an even better test coverage and check all entities if possible and if it makes sense on a probably or if possible an automated way. And they wanted to, to set up a process or a technology that is able to integrate all new entities that get built during uh, future releases and so that they get automatically integrated into the testing framework. So they have a very uh, a, a lower maintenance effort at the end. And yeah, also interesting over time, they built many processes around this data quality framework they built themselves, starting with some tickets in their service desk tool and fixing these quality issues, but also with maintaining the test framework and so on. And the new system needed to integrate directly into these processes so that they don't need to change uh, all these processes. And yeah, so they looked out for a system that is able to integrate with technical processes, but also with uh, business processes. And yeah, I think luckily that they found Biggiewell and they did a proof of concept with us. And at the end, they uh, decided to go with Biggiewell because uh, it fulfilled their requirements in full. And we also were very flexible with working with them because they had very special requirements that need to be implemented. And so we could help them uh, because Biggiewell is very flexible. It has a scripting concept that means you can customize everything that it runs within Biggiewell and implement your own processes or own behavior directly within Biggiewell. Uh, but let's look how they implemented everything. So uh, here on this diagram, you can see an example you know, out of their infrastructure. It's just uh, theoretically because um, in real life, as you may imagine, uh, they have much more databases, uh, much more complex infrastructure. But this diagram shows you what they did basically. So if we look here at the, their acquisition layer, where they do one-to-one -one copies or staging of source data, they wanted to be assured that the acquisition or the staging has been done completely and correctly. Uh, so they did data comparisons between these databases here to check whether all data is present, whether it's complete, whether it fulfills all requirements regarding data contracts and so on. And then we have here their core layer, an access layer, and finally the end user access layer, let's call this data marts or something like this, or analytical layer here. These are many different layers they have. And they did a comparison also between these databases. So let's say checking whether all premium transactions are available in all of these layers. Uh, if one is missing, it's a, a red flag and the, the load process need to be fixed probably, or maybe there is a data issue or whatever. Uh, then they uh, did consistency tests here, so technical tests. So I will show you later, on, I think on the next slide, yes, what what is what kind of tests they are doing there, and they did this in all layers. And also at the end, some technical tests, so whether the security is implemented correctly or whether the permissions of people are correct, and whether all these these end user views uh, work correctly at the end. So that's basically what they did. And they could implement everything with Biggiewell, all of these test cases here. So what are they doing? So look here at these comparisons. There are just a handful of test cases they implemented, and but these uh, were very powerful. First, start with the comparisons. So what they are doing is uh, they check whether objects have all columns, whether they, for, from a perspective of metadata, they check whether naming is correct, whether any requirements uh, regarding descriptions are correct, and whether all objects are present here at the end. So they, they count objects or records in their databases. They check whether our primary keys are present and so on. Then they are building checksums over a couple of attributes and check whether these checks are the same in the, in the target databases. Uh, so this gives a hint about, uh, let's say, if any uh, character encodings are incorrect or whether any, any information have been falsified during the loading process or something like this. Then we talked about consistency checks. Uh, there are a couple of consistency uh, checks they are doing. So first of all, checking whether there are any duplicates. So they implemented a, a great duplicate testing algorithm and implemented this right within a test case with uh, Biggiewell. So they see if they uh, get, get any duplicates produced during the load process or something like this. And then they check whether data is correctly distributed over time. 
with these time axis tests, they check whether all references can be resolved. So whether there is a, a foreign key that points to a primary key that doesn't exist or something like this. Then uh, date values need to be in valid ranges as an example. And me, I personally think uh, the string length test, it doesn't sound very uh, spectacular, but it's, it's very powerful because they have or usually within a data model, you have two different types of strings that you are storing. Uh, you have free text and probably you have um, code values. So let's say you have a product code or you have a, a sales territory code or something like this or a country code as an example. So let's take the country code. Country codes need to be two or three characters in length, depends on the ISO model you are using. But if you have a field with which does only allow three characters in length and you load just two characters, this may point to a data quality issue because the wrong ISO format has been used for, as an example. And so this is this gives you a hint whether there are any wrong uh, product codes or something like this. And this uh, is at the end very powerful to, to find data quality issues. Then we have history comparisons. So that means BiggieWell stores, uh, as an example, uh, let's say the, the amount of premiums distributed over products of different uh, assurance products. Uh, so let's say on a specific product, we have 10% of the premiums. On the other one, we have 15% and another one at 30%. And this distrib distribution, if you look over time, it usually doesn't change too much. If it changes much too much, so maybe the 10% go up to 70%, then this probably is a data quality issue. And so that's what they are doing with these history comparisons. So they check for value distribution or uh, check over time how values distribute and so on. Uh, and this uh, is also a, a great way how to find uh, data quality issues at the end. And then, yeah, we have technical checks. Uh, let's check for empty tables. Uh, so maybe some data is missing in, st in the staging area. So we have an empty table as an example. Or if we think at the access layer or the end user layer, which is built on views in this specific example, they check whether the view can, views can be executed, whether they return any results and so on. So yeah, also security testing is implemented on this, on this layer as well. Okay. Yeah, that's not all what is possible with BiggieWell. I integrated here a slide about what is poss possible with BiggieWell in the area of BI testing. Just remember, BiggieWell is not only uh, concepted to be used within business intelligence. So we're talking about data warehouses, ETL, ELT, data analytics, and so on. It can also be used in many different scenarios as well. And uh, so maybe in data migrations, when you develop business applications or build data import or exports and so on. Uh, so you can implement all these kind of test cases here and we, we provide a lot of templates combined with uh, BiggieWell and they can be used uh, directly with, within your own scenario. But the most powerful feature BiggieWell used is um, uh, we call this massive scaling. So I jump back to this slide here. If you see, if you look at this slide, you can see there are just a couple of, of uh, test cases or type types of test cases. And if you have a string length test, for example, you can apply it on a specific code field, but you want to apply it to hundreds of other code fields as well. So it doesn't make sense to duplicate test cases and so on, because you will have a, a huge maintenance effort at the end. And uh, you, you need to build new test cases for new uh, code fields and so on. And this is too complex to be handled reliably. So we are offering this massive scaling functionality with BiggieWell, and this works like this. So first we need metadata. So let's say we have any kind of source of metadata here, maybe a list of all dimension tables that are historized or whatever, and maybe a source table to this dimension table. And it doesn't matter how it looks like, this is a simple example to show you how it works. Uh, then you implement a test case and this test case utilizes uh, this metadata. So let's say we want to count number of records from our source table and compare this to the count of records in our dimension table. Uh, so BiggieWell takes the first record and does this comparison uh, and the test result gets produced uh, and either successful or, or uh, failed test result. 
Uh, then it goes over to the next metadata record and changes the test case dynamically. So that now we are querying the same from the products table and our dimension product table. And then the third one. Each of these test runs produce a test result. And if we had hundreds or even thousands of, uh, of tables here or dimensions, the Biggiewell automatically produces a huge amount of test results. So you get a very high test coverage. And the, the nice thing here is you don't need to implement more test cases manually later on if you add more dimensions in another sprint or release cycle. So, at the end, this led to a very impress impressive statistic here directly from Helsana. So if you look here at these numbers, uh, you can see here on, uh, on these different architectural layers, how many test cases get run every day, just based on this handful of uh, types of test cases I showed you. So they are all using this massive scaling functionality. And if we summarize this all, we have about 17,000 test results or test runs that run every day on different entities throughout the whole data landscape. So we have a very large or, or high test coverage. And as our customers say, a, a very good gut feeling at the end of the day that everything works and is correctly. So yeah, I think this is very impressive. And I want to show you how this works now in our demo. So let me go over to the demo environment here. I'm not in the environment of Helsana. They are doing their own stuff, but I have here a standardized demo environment from our company, and I can show you how this works with this massive scaling. So here, Biggiewell is a browser application. It works directly in the environment of, uh, of the customer. Uh, so data doesn't need to go to a third party provider like we are or in any Azure or, or cloud environment. It stays always under control of the customer, but the application is browser based. So let's log in. And what you see here is the dashboard of Biggiewell. So you can see the last test results, how they developed over time and so on. You can dive deeper into details if you want. But today I will not show you the basics of Biggiewell and how it works and so on. I will focus on this very specific case of this massive scaling functionality. So let's go to a test case that implements this massive scaling. So these are the test cases here within a, a test suite I implemented. And we have here this specific uh, historization check. That this uh, test case checks whether the historization feature of a dimension, SCD2 in other words, is implemented correctly. And if it doesn't work correctly, it will show on which records this was and which problem that was detected. And yeah, here in the test case editor, uh, we have several things that we can uh, set up here. But most important in this case is uh, the control register at the end. Usually the control register looks like this. Let me show you this on another test case. You don't need to do here anything. Uh, it just has one single call in this script. Uh, but what we did here in this test case is we change the behavior of the test case. So if we go to uh, do this test case here, uh, you can see a couple of code lines here or scripting lines. On the first line here, what we do is we query a list of all tables that are historized uh, of all these dimension tables. Uh, so we query this in this specific case from the schema catalog of SQL Server. It could come from anywhere else. And this specific thing here is uh, to, uh, to check for historized dimension if they have a start date column. It's just for this example, it could be any other way to check whether a, a table has historization features included. Uh, but now we have a list of these tables and Biggiewell loops through this list here. Uh, so we have here this for each loop. And then what we do here is uh, here on line number 12, Biggiewell executes the test case within each of these iterations of this loop. Uh, but before we can do this, uh, we need to set up two parameters. First, the table name of the historized dimension table. And secondly, the primary key of the table or the business key, however you call it. And now, if we go here to the probes register, this is, if I go back to the presentation here, these, uh, uh, these probes uh, come from the databases. So that means in this case, we count the number of employees. So, so this is the, the probe query, and this is the second probe query. So we have two different probes in this uh, example. But the same is here. We have SQL queries uh, that get executed here on the data warehouse. And the second probe is also the data warehouse. So, 
issue. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's the, the one comes from the ERP usually and the other one from the data warehouse. Uh, it's just an implement, uh, implementation issue I made, a uh, problem I made in preparation of this webinar, but doesn't matter. So what we can do here is we can exchange or build the SQL query dynamically. So we can exchange here the table name or object names here by parameter values. The same here with the primary key. So we can exchange the primary key by the parameter value and the same with the table. And uh, we do the same in the second uh, probe here. And then if I run this test case, it will run multiple times. So I pushed here on the manual play button. I, for sure, I can automate this with a time plan, but also by including it right into my ETL process or into a CICD process to, uh, to do regression testing as an example. But here in this case, when I started it manually, it's, it ran three times. Uh, so we have three different test results that I can analyze here within this de uh, run detail dialog and two of these test cases failed. So I can see here that the employee dimension and the product dimension had some problems with historicity. If I go deeper here, I can see that we had some, uh, some start and end date that were turned around in the wrong order. Uh, so the start date was after the end date in this case. So that doesn't make sense. So there was an implementation issue within our ETL process probably. <laughs> so this is an example that shows you how this massive scaling works. So imagine if we have a future sprint or a new release of our data warehouse and we add 10 more dimensions, they get automatically included into this regression testing and we can use this in our during our development cycle, but we can also use the same on a daily basis within our productive environment. So let me go back to, to the presentation and show you how they implemented one more feature that is interesting. So let's go here to this slide, process integration. It was a requirement of Helsana to integrate with their processes, with technical processes, but also with their business processes. And BigQL has, uh, has, we call this an alerting concept here uh, to integrate with other applications. So we have event triggers like a specific test case fails or a list of test case failed or whatever. And these triggers uh, trigger different integrations with other applications. So BigQL can integrate with this kind of SaaS integrators like Microsoft Power, Power Automate, Zapier or Make.com. And this leads to integration possibilities with thousands of other applications. So that means if something fails, you may send statistical information about uh, what failed and so on, how many test cases failed and so on to one of these applications or you build a process of flow within uh, Power Automate or Zapier or so and send out uh, notifications to, let's say, to Teams or Slack or whatever. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities what you can do with this. The second possibility, uh, what you can do if something happens or gets triggered, you can integrate with webhooks. So that means BigEWell sends statistical data about the test results to a webhook you can set up. Uh, so maybe you have a business application or a custom developed application that offers a possibility to integrate with webhooks and then it can receive information about test cases uh, and the test results. Uh, it, but it can also run scripts, let's say C sharp code as an example, or PowerShell script, and that that can be used to to let's say build a ticket within your service desk application, uh, and that's what Elsana used as well uh, to do this. And last but not least, we have native integrations with different applications, like they are listed here. So maybe you want to provide test results to Azure DevOps so you can see whether everything works well right within this uh, CI-CD solution. Okay, yeah, there are a lot of things you can do as well with BiggieWell and some of these scenarios have also been implemented at our customer details on the bottom. We have technical scenarios. I talked about these. If you remember back to the fortress, uh, we talked about gating what goes in and out of the fortress. Uh, we call this quality gates. So you can implement quality gates here. Also an interesting thing. But on top, we have uh, these business scenarios. There are a lot of, men uh, of tasks uh, connected to data, to validate data and so on, that gets done uh, manually today. And most of these can be automated using uh, BigEWell. 
So as an example, financial controlling checks whether specific accounts are, are booked to zero at the end of the month and such things can be automated easily with BigEL. Okay. And yeah, with these words, I close my, my presentation and thank you again uh, for being here. Let's go over, Chris, Q and a Yeah, no, we've got some Thanks. questions that have come through, Thomas. So uh, we'll get straight started with, uh, started with those. So we've got the first one came through when you were talking through the, the uh, statistics, the test volume statistics for Halsana. It's, um, we use Calibra to document our data infrastructure. Is it possible to use metadata from the data catalog? Yes, sure. It doesn't matter where metadata comes from. It just needs to be in a structured format. It can come from an Excel list. It can come from CSV files, even from a, a solution like Colibra that has a data cat catalog. So BigEL can query also this metadata. We even have an integration package for Wellscape Red. Just to mention that there is also a lot of metadata from what de developers modeled within uh, Wellscape. And this can also be used uh, right within BigEL to automate testing and massively scale out. Okay, uh, we've got a few more. Mm -hmm. um, how does your Fortress concept fit into the overall data governance framework? Um, yeah, basically data quality testing or checking and also test automation is just one specific action or discipline of data governance. So besides of all these process things and um, yeah, there are also systems and information needed for data governance. And BigEL provides this information about quality of data and where to maybe as a decision basis to find out where to do more quality fixing actions or projects, however. So it's one part of uh, data governance. Okay. Um we've got so how can we easily transition from manual testing to automated testing um, yeah so i assume uh, this person has no uh, automation possibilities today or maybe has a, a collection of sql scripts that's what we often see so these sql script scripts can be run manually and what we recommend is going to full automation is usually a, a difficult task uh, it can be done but if you have a solution like BiggieWell, you can start with just simple high level things just start with counting your entities over between different architectural layers maybe between erp and data warehouse uh, do this kind of testing there and then you can go deeper and implement even even more detailed test, test cases so you can uh, develop this over time so it doesn't need to be developed within a short release sprint or something like this so just add it to your manual testing okay no thank you <laughs> um last question is can we build test cases for Snowflake using a big eval? Yes, uh, at the end, it doesn't matter which technology you have. Eval is uh, technology agnostic. Uh, that means if you have an OLEDB or an ODBC driver, then you can connect or, the, or BigEL can connect to these systems and validate data from there. Uh, so it even has a, a concept to validate data between different technologies. Uh, so maybe you want to check data from your data lake against data from a REST API or also include a CSV file in the same test case. So this can be done because BigEL abstracts data. So yes, Snowflake is uh, definitely something that uh, we support with many other current technologies as well. Thank you, Thomas. I'm just doing one last check. Uh, got one other question here. Last one's come in. How much manual effort was it to implement the test cases shown or were they created automatically? No. The, the effort was, I can tell you about, I don't know the, the exact hours, but it was one and a half person worked over about three months or so to completely migrate the manual testing framework to BiggieWell. And uh, even on the first day, they had their first test case running and uh, first benefits. Uh, so it was, I think, not too difficult. And the result was they could really migrate 100% of each of these manual test cases they had before. Brilliant. Thank you, Thomas. Um, that's all the questions we have. So um, I guess look, on behalf of Thomas and myself, if anyone has any more questions or any other queries come off the back of this, please don't hesitate to reach out to the team at Big Eval or the team here at Engaging Data. Um, before I let everyone go, I suppose it's always left to say is a big thank you to Thomas for joining us today. It was great to live this case study, understand some of the challenges in the insurance space, and of course, see how 
Big Evo is helping to alleviate them. Um, big thank you to everybody that's come to join us. We'll share the recording with some goodies and some additional material that you'll find useful out shortly. Um, do keep an eye out for our next session where we'll be joined by our partners at Yellowfin to talk about analytics made beautiful. And that's all everything from me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much again for coming and take care.